Hello, friends of interoperability. Last week, I had the opportunity to attend the Autodesk Developer Conference, which was focused all around the Autodesk platform services and new ways of working with data. It was an incredibly inspiring event, so I wanted to share a few highlights with you. Originally, I planned to do a full summary of the event, but this would have been a two hours long video at least, so I decided to share just the main highlights and cover the rest in the future videos. The DevCon was a two-day conference that took place in Munich, and it's always special to have a global Autodesk event hosted in Europe. We also had uh, many Autodesk executives and colleagues and attendees, of course, for, from all over the world, which really made this a very special event with an amazing agenda, where each day was kicked off with a general session. Ben Cochran, the VP of Developer Enablement, opened the event by reminding us of the vast amount of data created every day, 2.5 exabyte or 2.5 million terabyte. So what do we do with this data? The sad truth is it remains largely unused. So while this number continues to grow, we need to ensure that this data is meaningful and above all accessible so that it can be used in new AI powered workflows. Shali Mushtaba, VP of Product Data at Autodesk, continued by elaborating that one third of material on construction sites is wasted, while at the same time we have a one third cost increase of these very same materials. On top of this, one third of architects, engineers and the construction workers are aging out of the workforce. This really shows the urgency of improving the way we work in AC and ultimately also adopting AI workflows wherever we can. If you want to hear more about these numbers and the current state of our industry, I highly recommend you to look at the newest state of design and make report by Autodesk, which I will link in the video description below. The Autodesk platform vision opens whole new ways of working and managing our data based on three approaches, granularity, interoperability and accessibility enabled by the Autodesk data model, data exchange and of course the data access. In fact, there are three Autodesk data models built on top uh, of the Autodesk platform services, Forma for AC, Fusion for design and manufacturing and Flow for media and entertainment. The AC data model is based on the concept of granular data stored in the cloud and made accessible through an application programming interface or API. This means also moving away from files and the limitations of file formats in general to a more open and interoperable way of working. Next, Farzad and Tobias introduced a great metaphor in their session to help us understand this concept. The file-based approach could be seen as a traditional road atlas where you have to manually look for your destination. While the data model could be described as the Google Maps where you simply enter the desired location into the search field. The data model enables multiple use cases such as design validation, live dashboards, model compare and various custom workflows and integrations into other tools and services. Avixi, a US company, presented a fascinating use case that utilized the AC data model to help one of its clients streamline extracting data from Revit models for quality checks. Avixi was able to achieve significant time savings by avoiding the need to access and open the Revit models, create tables and export these by using the AC data model API to extract Revit elements and their properties. This is a truly amazing use case showcasing the power of the granular data, and it's only the beginning. If you are thinking now APIs are something for developers only, hold on. The AC data model is very accessible even to non-developers through a ready-to-use GraphQL integration in your browser. GraphQL is a query language for APIs initially developed by Meta and now open sourced. Using this interface, everyone can query data from a Revit model created with the version 2024 or later and stored on the Autodesk Construction Cloud. If you are interested in testing the data model yourself, go to aps.autodesk.com, click on Solutions, select Data Model and follow the instructions to join the beta. 
Building up on top of this, data exchange enables interoperability between specific tools using dedicated plugins that exchange subsets of granular data. Farzad and Tobias again explained it with their Google Maps analogy. If you think of the data model as a Google Maps, then data exchange is basically the route planning, which gives you the information needed to go from A to B. Data exchange enables workflows such as design validation and general exchange of data, but also the exchange of native model elements, as it is already possible for Beams, for example, between Tecla and Revit. There is a bunch of data connectors currently under development, and you can try out most of them yourself if you join the beta. Simply head over to aps.autodesk.com, navigate to solutions and select data exchanges. Here you will find a link to join the beta, uh, where you will also be able to download the connectors and access the documentation and the feedback forums. There's also a link to the public roadmap, which provides a great overview of the currently available connectors and also the ones currently under development. And you can, of course, vote for your favorites. If you are uncertain about which connector to start with, I highly recommend you the Revit and Power BI connectors. And there is a great workflow illustrated in this blog post, which I will, of course, also link in the video description below. This was truly an amazing event with more than 500 attendees from all over the world and many inspirational sessions about other Autodesk platform services APIs, which you can explore through the APS website. The DevCon also made me realize that platform and database workflows are blurring the boundaries between developers and the tech savvy AC professionals. I think that more and more of us will start exploring these opportunities and maybe developing some basic workflows on our own. And I don't mean that we will all become developers, but it will be very helpful to understand these new APIs to improve the workflows and also to have better conversations with full-time developers. I would really love to hear your thoughts on this, so please share them in the comments. Would you be interested in seeing more videos about the AC data model and data exchange and maybe how they relate to the other APIs? I really hope you are, because I'm afraid I'll be doing these videos in every case. See you soon.